I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, recorded on July 23rd, 2015. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths Finder themes, one theme at a time, and today's theme is significance. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video window. So if you're watching us on video, just look straight down. It does require you to log in. You don't have to create an account. Just click the login button, bottom left-hand corner. You can create a guest account. Just put your name in there so we know who you are. That's the best way to get questions into the program while we're doing this, and we will take your questions live, so I encourage you to get logged in if you can. If you're listening to the recorded version is, or you need custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, you can contact us, send us an email. That's really the best way, coaching at gallup.com. And, of course, don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. For all your coaching resources and strengths finder training needs, you can also catch the video about streaming. And now, downloadable audio. And this is what we really like for you to do. Subscribe to this in some way. Download it on your phone. Listen to it on the train, a plane, in the car. Recoup that time that you'd normally be traveling uh, while you listen to Theme Thursday. All the options are for that are available on the Coach's blog. This is really the one site to write down, but don't do this while you're driving. Coaching.gallop.com. Micah Leibrandt is our host today. Micah works as an advanced learning and development consultant with Gallup somewhere in the United States. Micah, I never quite know where you are. I think you're coming <laughs> in from home today, but welcome to Theme Thursday. Thanks, Jim. You know what? I, I like that ambiguity. It lets me sort of orbit that giant hairball that is uh, pinning me down. <laughs> I'm calling you from home today, just outside Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm based here in Goldsboro, which is halfway between Raleigh and the coast. Awesome. Well, hey, Micah, thank you. We are returning to Theme Thursdays. We've taken an extended break. It's been an interesting two months as we've uh, as we've you know gone through what we've gone through with Theme Thursday. Thank you for coming. Thank you for filling in and and uh, tell us. Tell us uh, about our guest and what we're doing today. Excellent. So we are kicking off um, the last 10 remaining Theme Thursdays today with significance. And um, Jim and Kurt Liesfeld together really powered through about a year and a half of excellent work going so in-depth with these these 24 themes so far. Um, we've now decided we need to continue that as a way to, to honor Kurt, but also as a way to honor this mission to fall in love with all 34 strengths. Um, I've been teaching strengths for about the past 11 years and working with Gallup for seven. And I always used to say, if you're going to be an individual contributor, you don't need to know that much about other strengths. Uh, if you're going to coach, you really need to fall in love with all 34. Um, and I think the more I, I, I consider that idea, the more I think if you're going to be a really great human being and if you're going to understand other people, you should probably think about at least being open to falling in love with all 34. So today we get to talk about significance. Um, and I, um, as I was preparing for this, I think I spend most of my time teaching people about significance um, in a way that sort of helps them sort of back off off that cliff. It tends to be one of those themes that people are uh, really excited about and not usually in a positive way. Their, their <laughs> first reaction to it tends to be a little bit scary. Um, but out of all 34, it's the one that I get the most questions about in, in a teaching scenario. So today, I've been looking forward to probably since we started Theme Thursday a year and a half ago. Um, so it's, it's going to be really exciting. We have an awesome guest with us. We have John Liesfeld. John um, lives and works and loves um, in Lincoln, Nebraska, one of my favorite towns ever, um, where he hosts a news and talk show at KLIN, which is 1400 AM, one of my also favorite um, podcasts to follow you on, John. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me uh, on today. I, I, I'm honored, and I, I'm real glad the first time I come on here, you've given me the task of helping people fall in love with significance. That's an uphill battle to start, but hopefully we can do it today. <laughs> I think if anybody can do it, you can. Thanks so much. Um, so I really just also want to give a shout out to Jim for all that you've done so far. Jim, your combination of positivity and communication, I think, is what's made these um, so educational and so exciting. Uh, your work together with Kurt has just been phenomenal. And as I was preparing for this, I found myself reading through notes that I had, and all of them either had something to do with a previous theme Thursday, with something on the coaching blog, or with something that I had scribbled and attributed to Kurt. So between your strengths 
and his uh, I think his his analytical was this curious warmth that really asked great questions um, and not because he knew the answers already and so that's what we're gonna um, try and take forward today yeah thanks Mike an incredible power of two a real privilege uh, to be a part of that and so it's been it, it has been a, it was a joy to make it through the first 24 excited about the next 10 so glad to be on the journey and thanks for being willing to do this with us today my pleasure so shall we kick off just by starting a little bit about significance sounds good excellent so when I think about significance it is an influencing theme I think about if you were to really shorthand significance it's about those people who are led by a desire to leave a legacy not only are they led by that but they have the ability to lead others because of that same vision um, actually, as we were, uh, I've heard this great lore around the theme significance in that as we were developing StrengthsFinder, it was originally called Desire. Um, apparently, our, our editors thought that seemed a little bit too much like a steamy paperback novel because it didn't stick. But, you know, thinking about it as that term desire, I think it helps us understand significance, especially as you understand some of those other themes that maybe people fall in love with a little bit more quickly. Um, and in that, it's, it's pretty similar to something like futuristic where I'm led by my idea for the future, or even like competition where I'm led by my, my drive to win. What significance is led by and shares that, that ability to lead others, is that, um, that, that desire for meaningful work. Uh, and I think about people with high significance as having a desire to be seen, to be noticed, and to be visible. And now if you think about the word visible, it is the opposite of invisible, meaning significance is attracted to detectable, evidence-based work that you can see. Um, tangible connections to, to making an impact are important to people with high significance. Visible is also the opposite of unknown. So significance is attracted to proven, lasting works. Uh, perhaps more concrete proof that the work matters is important there. It's, it's, a, it's important not to just assume that what I'm doing is making a difference, but to know that it's going to be there. Um, I, I, I see people with high significance as having a really strong correlation between what I do and who I am. But they don't just want to be seen um, as, as an individual, they want their work to be seen. They want to, the difference that they're making really to, to walk through the room first. Uh, people with high significance, they seek to affect others, and, and that's how we can understand that it is an influencing theme when you think about those leadership domains. They tend to have a sense for when that is working and when it isn't, M much like some other influencing themes have that uh, almost radar out for, okay, is this making a difference? Is this making an impact? Is this something that's really uh, affecting other people? Um, if you think about an individual as uh, with high significance, they could be seen as a champion um, and a change agent in some cases. Uh, I like the word advocate, and that, that comes to mind when I think about people with high significance. You might describe them as independent, focused, driven, uh, brave. I think there's quite a bit of courage that comes with significance because it is that, that courage to be bold enough to do only the most meaningful things. Let's talk a little bit about um, significance and other theme domains. This is a coaching technique that often we will ask our coaches to do with their clients is um, we know there are four different leadership domains. Nobody has to be well-rounded in all of them, but sometimes they do tell us what leaders need. Um, so significance is an influencing theme, but it can execute. So think about the way that significance might execute. Perhaps it's as a motivator to get through the more mundane tasks that we have to do. I was speaking with somebody uh, yesterday with high significance who said, you know, sometimes if I don't want to do something, if I can understand how it's connecting to something meaningful, that's how I get through it. Mm -hmm. So knowing that it's going to lead to something that's going to matter is the only thing that, that makes me take action. Significance could also execute by considering the effect that that execution will have on other people. Remember, it's an influencing theme, so it's about how do I affect the way that other people see me or affect the way that other people uh, move forward. Uh, can also execute by helping focus, sort of being a, a, a sorting mechanism to focus to the most tangible prize or to potential recognition that exists. 
think about how does significance build relationships. Um, it might be by sorting to the most important or the most influential people in the room. Now, before you, you hear that and think, gosh, that sounds manipulative, <laughs> I'd like you to understand it as, you know, a, really spend your time where it matters. Um, and I, um, I'm i married to a guy with significance. I think it's one of the most attractive things about him. And I will describe myself as a, uh, a person at a party if we go together. I want everybody to, to be included. I've got high includer and high woo. I will spend my time with anyone and I'll have a great time. Um, he will be able to walk into a room and think, you know what, there are going to be great relationships in this room, but it's not going to be with everybody. Um, and so it almost asks, acts as a sorting mechanism to build really meaningful relationships with the mm -hmm. right people. Um, it also, I think, significance can build relationships by inspiring other people. Um, so it, it can be a really inspirational piece to help people focus on clearing a path to that difference. Um, so really help people understand there are certain things that are more important than others. Now maybe those things are what's going to get us recognized, what's going to leave a legacy. Again, that courage, that, that boldness to do the work that other people might shy away from. Um, seeing hidden potential for impact where other people don't see it. I'm told that Don Clifton had significance. Now, it makes me wonder, would he have started a company without significance, or would it have been okay to stay in an academic realm? Um, I, I, ever since I've, I've been working at Gallup, this has always been one of the things that comes up when we talk about significance is sometimes it's what pushes you to push those boundaries that other people wouldn't be bold enough to push or, or maybe wouldn't even see because they're not quite so focused on that prize that significant is, significance is focused on. I, I also think that you know, given uh, the right themes around it, significance can focus on social impact and social needs. So think about the, um, you know, the professional who's winning community involvement awards because of what they do after school with, with inner city kids. Or, or I worked with a teacher once who had been laid off in a big uh, teacher layoff, and she said, you know, the, the part that hurts the most is I was going to be the best teacher that those kids had because I had all these sort of uh, competitions lined up that we were going to win. Now she's a kindergarten teacher with significance which might freak some people out but when you hear it that way it sounds like oh wow that, that, that certainly is how she's building relationships. Significance can also help you think critically um, by focusing on what's important, focusing on the effort that's going to get you to what truly matters. Um, also by being sort of a critical um, questioner at the beginning of a process, uh, working with people with high significance, I, also lo I always love them to ask me that question of now, how important is this? Because I really want to do the important work. Uh, they can help us find obvious touch points in a process. You know, when can we celebrate? What can we celebrate? Maybe who should know about this? I do quite a bit of work in our education team, and um, I was working with a, a large school board who had gone through some difficult PR times, and um, they had a lot of belief on their team, a lot of uh, themes that were about just do the right thing, and then they had one person with high significance. And in the conversation, she would always say, who else needs to know about the good things that we're doing? So she brought it to that elevated place where it really needed to be so that other people could see the important work that they were doing. I also always like to think um, about my own themes or about every other themes is what feeds this theme? Um, so how to feed significance? It might be by expanding the conversation beyond the deed and into the difference. If you're speaking with somebody with high significance, always uh, cast that lens pretty wide of here's what's happening at the very end, not just here's our list of tasks that we need to complete. Mm -hmm. Imagine the outcome. Uh, start from the end and work backwards. Allow for independence, both in uh, the tasks that you're selecting and the way that you're executing them. So if you're the person with significance, sometimes it's important to ask for that independence. And if you're leading someone with significance, it's important to know that they're going to need some of that independence. Uh, if you have significance, you can feed it by stretching others, by sharing your focus on performance, really being bold enough to say, okay, we need to measure this, or, or we need to apply for a grant around this, or there's some way that we could be recognized that other people are missing. 
also constant feedback. Um, and I love that I'm using the word feedback and how to feed significance. That's being done intentionally. Because <laughs> everyone I've spoken to really getting curious about significance has mentioned they crave that sort of feedback. They crave that awareness of how are things being taken up. Conversely, how might you kill significance? Well, you could prioritize being busy over doing meaningful work. Uh, you could assume that feedback has been taken rather than give it explicitly. Um, I know that uh, for some themes like, like responsibility or achiever, great praise is getting more work. For significance, they actually need the praise. So stop long enough to understand that, that if you're giving more work because I've done such a great job, make sure that you say that out loud. Um, you could also kill significance by downplaying the connection between the work they're doing and the impact that's being created by assuming they already know that or even by seeing all contributions as being equal. Now, I mean that as my contribution versus Jim's, but I also mean that as what I did at 9 a.m. versus the really important thing I did at noon. Um, being able to, to see all of that as some of these are more valuable than others, that's important for people with significance. Uh, I, I do want to spend most of our time today on what mature significance looks like. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of an idea, raw significance, so, so in the form where maybe my well-being is, is down or I'm hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or I've just got this, this talent in the raw form, it hasn't yet been molded into something helpful. Raw significance constricts the focus to looking only at me. Mature significance expands the sphere of influence, uh, sharing the difference that I'm making with other people. Raw significance can lack patience, especially for, for tasks that don't seem like they're essential. Mature significance can make the connection between the task I'm doing and the impact I'm making and help other people do the same. Raw significance focuses on what's lacking. Mature significance focuses on what, what will be or where we are going. The last thing I'd like to talk about before we bring in John here is, is this concept of theme dynamics. So uh, looking at our, our research, the most likely theme pair to be paired with significance is achiever. And you can imagine how those two might work really well together. So significance, we've talked about, it's that drive to, um, to be seen, to be visible, to do visible work. Achiever, if you hear the last part of do work, Goes, goes along really nicely with it. I think about those two together, Achiever sort of becomes the engine, uh, the, the workhorse, the execution bit that can take a big idea and break it down into milestones. So thinking of both of them together, what might that look like? It's taking a big important idea and seeing the pieces I can execute on. Uh, the least likely theme pair is significance and developer, which happens just 1% of the time. Um, and it, you might understand that by thinking about both of these are, are about focusing on what we're doing. Developer is looking for ways that I can help of everybody move up one step. Um, developer doesn't tend to uh, discern between growth. It says, you know, any growth is good growth. Whereas significance is, is a little bit pickier. It says, you know what, I want to have the right growth. I want to have the growth that gets me noticed. Um, however, just because they're, they're not likely to appear doesn't mean that, they're not, that they can't be great together. If you've got both significance and developer, I'd imagine that you're spending a lot of your time in sort of that social capital piece where you are helping other people grow into uh, ways that they can be recognized. If you think about maybe some possible complementary partnerships with significance, um, the first thing that I imagine is uh, some, some strategic thinking themes, ideation and learner. Imagine how those two could help stretch significance into uh, understanding the abstract a little bit better, could, could enhance the tolerance of maybe imagining how you're making a difference rather than needing to see that tangible piece of it. I also think significance would help these themes sort to what's the most important idea you had today or what's the most important thing you need to learn. Um, how can you really add an endpoint, add a, um, a focus point to really spotlight what's happening there? If you think about some other themes that go nicely with significance, um, maybe some executing themes that help you take action, or follow through, uh, responsibility, achiever, arranger, to see the steps needed to get to the glory, um, to, to delight in taking those steps, and to understand that, you know, 
one way to make an impact is to make promises to others. Uh, another theme that I love seeing with significance, um, and this is just because I spoke to someone who had both of them this week, and he said it so beautif beautifully, that was our friend Scott Caldwell, who told me about his combination of significance and maximizer. They're both in his top ten, and he says, you know what, that creates a patience with the process. Uh, you know, I can make it front, I can make things meaningful from the inside because I'm constantly looking for what I can polish and constantly looking for what's the most important thing to do. Speaking of theme dynamics, John has some fantastic themes dynamics going on. So um, I don't want to waste any more of your time before we get to him. I'm so excited to get to, to hear what he's got going on. His top five are um, competition, activator, connectedness, positivity, and significance. So just look at the powerhouse of, of, of potential that we have there. John, would you just tell us a little bit about what significance means for you? Uh, yeah, definitely. And, and first of all, thanks so much for having me here today. I, I think for me, significance really manifests itself in me thinking frequently, constantly, sometimes to the point of obsessing, but very much being focused on what other people are thinking and how they're reacting to the things that I'm doing in relationships, at work, all of the time. And um, uh, for me, that's the one thing that I see. Of course, everything you said, and by the way, you did an unbelievably job. There were so many times when you were talking there where I wanted to shout out an amen for the significance folks. That, <laughs> you, you nailed it so many times, but that's the one thing is wondering in, in the quest to, to kind of seek that, uh, that recognition, that feedback, you constantly find yourself thinking about what other people are thinking about what you're doing, what you're saying, and, and that can be of great benefit in a lot of times, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that today. Um, but it also leads to something that is this, the root of the word, significance, impact. You're using those things to, to, to you to make that impact. I, I know you said at the beginning, and you were exactly right, and I know my dad had said this in the past too, is that sometimes significance can be looked on by people who have it. I've done this or, or struggled with it by looking at it as almost a, um, such an ego-driven thing that it's a negative. I would encourage people who struggle to figure out exactly how it can be used in a productive, positive way to, to think of the recognition that's craved by people with significance instead of as being the end goal, um, as being the ends, Think of that as as the fuel to get to the impact. The recognition fuels the impact. The recognition in itself for me, while I love it and I crave it, that's not necessarily the end game. Thinking about that impact, which I think is actually then filtered through your other strengths, I think what that impact is depends on your other strengths. You realize you like having that fuel. It feels good to have that fuel, but it's not just having the fuel. It's then putting it into making something big happen somewhere else down the road. Mm, that's really cool. So what has that fuel led you to do? Um, <laughs> boy, I've got a, you know, it, it, I mean, I don't know, can I give a little background on, on, yeah, on just my career? I've got a, boy, I've got a unique career story, and <laughs> maybe it's got uh, significance imprinted all over it. Um, I went uh, I went to college, I majored in uh, started in communications, ended up going to political science because I liked the professor that I had. Didn't know what I was going to do after college exactly. Had some people say, well, you should go to law school. And um, it sounded intriguing to me. And so I did go to law school. Never, nece never necessarily had the intent, the primary intent, at least of practicing law. But I was being, I think, a little passive, maybe uh, immature with my future at the time. So I did go. Uh, ended up getting a job uh, out of law school. Um, doing civil litigation. I've got competition as well, so that certainly appealed to me. Um, but there was something there, uh, something not that, you know, it's interesting. When, you're, when you do civil litigation, and I did a fair amount of family law, every time your phone rings, it's almost always someone on the other end who's unhappy about something. Always. And I know there are plenty of careers that are like that. I, I by no means was the only one. But I usually had someone giving me negative feedback, whether it was opposing counsel, whether it was a client who was having a problem or who was unhappy with me. Um, and that, with some other factors, led to me realizing, okay, this isn't what I should be doing. Always had a pipe dream of being in, in radio. 
uh, I did a little bit of college radio. I always thought it was uh, I always thought it was a dream. I didn't ever think it would happen. Uh, on a whim, when I was in law school, I had dropped a resume to some of the general managers of the radio station of the town that I live in, and I got a call three years after I did that, three years into my law career, from a general manager and said, um, hey, I had this resume. I've got an opening on a news talk radio show. I've always been intrigued with some, putting someone with a law degree uh, in, that, in that spot, and uh, I cast a really wide net. I've got 100-plus people interested. Would you still be interested? And I said yes right away because that gave me that opportunity. I mean, the way you explain significance fits right into why that was so appealing to me. The ability to have to know that you've got an audience, to know that you're going to get feedback, to know I've got these other strengths and these other beliefs that are fueling what I can say and and do that. And um, so I made the switch, which a lot of people, including my parents at the time, didn't quite understand, I don't think, <laughs> you, to call your parents and say, hey, I'm uh, ending my law career to start a talk radio show. Um, it was a, it was an interesting call. But anyway, yeah, and, and we can talk a little bit more, and I think we will throughout here, how that significance is weaved into my career, and I've learned about it. But um, that's kind of the background that you might need to know for some of this stuff. Oh, that's so cool. So have you – did it feed your significance like you thought it would? Do you see your significance playing out at work now? Oh yeah, without without question, um, it 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 feeds it and it helps me because um, it's necessary. It's necessary in the line of work that I'm in, and it's so many lines of work to be thinking about the consumer's reaction to what you do. And in radio, it's incredibly important. If you go in and you're so self-focused, and you said, "Well, I want to," you know, uh, I've got an idea about what I'm doing and not necessarily be adaptable in thinking about the audience, you're not going to go far because uh, unless the audience likes you, you're not going to get people listening to you. And so um, you, I'm constantly asking the question and, and striving for positive feedback and, and thinking about listeners and how they're reacting to me. And I think that's one of the ways for me that I've been able to do that. And and, and then let's be honest, there's, there's some... Um, and, and this is where the ego part maybe comes in, but there's some uh, value, and I think for me and people with significance and having a position that's kind of a a significant one, for lack of a better term, to be to be on a big stage, and you're certainly that. So people with significance crave the stage, I believe, and that's exactly what this is for me. Can you tell when your significance is triggered? Are there parts of your job you like more because you feel like you're getting to have more of that stage? Um, yeah, the I, I, I love – you talked about feed, the One of my favorite things is interaction with people who are listening to me so I can get that gauge because I'm constantly wondering how people are, uh, are reacting to me and I'm um, – constantly hoping it's going to be positive. I'm fueled, like I talked about, being fueled toward an impact. I, I'm fueled when I get people saying, I listened to you. I liked what you did. I loved when you said this. When you said this, it was hilarious. That's like that's like adrenaline for me. That propels me on to the next time and doing it better and better. So those moments that are the most uh, – fueling to me, the most energizing to me are those times when I do get to interact with the people I'm talking to and usually can't see. And by the way, doing this over video, it's so weird because I, I've done radio for nine years and I've never looked anyone directly in the eyes when I've done it. <laughs> this is a whole new thing for me. Plus, I had to take off my baseball cap. So, <laughs> Well, let me just give me some feedback, John. You're rocking this. This is going really well. <laughs> so, okay, I do have to ask, though, what happens when it's bad feedback? It's tough. Um... You know, it's uh, just a little background. I do a I do a, a morning show, and I've got a co-host, and his name is Dave. And um, actually, um, my dad went through with Dave and did his strengths before he joined me on the show, and we did a little consult, which was interesting. And uh, one of his uh, uh, one of his top five, and I don't remember all of them, was uh, um, what is it? Self. Um, uh, okay. Self-assurance, yes. Self-assurance. Um, and I think, you know, I know sometimes you got and pardon me for not using any of the correct lexicon, but I know sometimes you, you guys will look at strengths that aren't necessarily opposites, but might be um, 
companions in, in different ways and or where they don't correlate highly together. I would think one of those might be self-assurance um, as well. And and just to get back to the to how it, it's affected the work, I'm thinking constantly about other people. Dave is very confident that what we're doing is liked by other people. And if it's not, you know, th that's all right. We need, you know, we keep going. So when I get negative reaction, I tend to I tend to obsess over it a little bit, even when it's little stuff. I tend to want to reply to it. I tend to want to explain, argue, talk through it when I get negative reaction from other people. It's interesting because he doesn't have a, much of a desire to do it. He lets it roll down his back. Um, I think I'd, I'd, I'd like to be better at doing that sometimes. With significance, sometimes it's hard not to be so focused on the reaction you're getting from other people um, that it might impede you from going forward. Even if it's just something little, it still matters to you. That's interesting. You know what, I I think, you know, I just saw a question here from the chat of can self-assurance look like significance at times? And, and I think probably yeah. both of them have that courage that they share, but maybe they're fueled by opposite things. What do you think? I would think if, if people would look at me and my co-host Dave, um, you know, from outside of a strengths perspective, they probably see, we probably both exhibit uh, traits that would make you think of what you would associate probably with, with somebody who's very self-assured. Um, but they come from very different places. He's He comes from kind of an, uh, an internal place where he's got a quiet confidence kind of about him. And I appear self-assured from an external place. When I'm getting it from others, that ups my confidence. I'm not, I don't internally have it all of the time, um, but I can get it and it ends up looking the same as self-assurance, I think. I think that's a, that's really the piece that I maybe would have picked on too is is the external versus internal piece. They're both influencing themes, so they're both about getting other people to do something or yeah. affecting the way that other people feel. Um, but when we talk about self assurance, we talk about having this internal compass where it's my spine, my gut tells me what to do. Yep. Um, I don't think your significance works that way. Not at all. No, not at all. And I'm uh, always thinking back to. You're thinking back to reactions. You're thinking back to what's worked. You're, there's a lot of factors that go in your mind. And you're thinking about what's going to get the biggest reaction, you know, and what's got the potential of being the biggest thing. Those are the things that go into your, your decisions when it comes to significance, at least for me. So this question might seem almost offensively simple, but I ask it with, <laughs> <laughs> with, with a lot of love for you, John. Why? <laughs> Why is significance a strength? Why is it a good thing? Because what I was talking about when I was talking about the fuel, I mean, think of it as a car. What I was talk, uh, uh, You're going to a destination in a car, but to get to that destination, you've got to have fuel. I think of significance that way. That recognition, those accolades, those things are the fuel. But the place that you're going with those is usually a pretty big destination. Uh, it's usually the goal, the, inf the, the, the whole hope is to influence, have as big of influence as possible on as many as people as possible, to have the biggest stage. Now, I don't think any of us would deny we want people in our lives, whether they be leaders, whether they be friends, whether they be people that we work with, that are going to accomplish influencing a lot of people I in any walk of life that's going to be important. That's the end game for significance. It's ending up having that big, so whether it's, uh, you know, selling widgets, convincing people to buy, have huge numbers of people to buy your widget, whether it's, um, you know, whether you're a pastor and, and having the biggest influence on the most important things, this is something that we all want to do in the end is influence a lot of people at some level and those people are key to actually making that happen because they want to do that. They crave that and you want someone on your side who doesn't fear the big stage because the big stage is going to come along at some point in every journey that you're on. It feels really good, I think, <laughs> and I'm speaking of myself, to have somebody <laughs> who's not afraid of the big stage when it comes along. Can you think about a time or, or, or a situation where your significance has really taken over for and, and led you to that comfort on a big stage? Yeah, um, there was one um, just a, just a couple of months ago, and 
Um, and, and I think most of you who are watching um, probably know who my father was. My dad was uh, Kurt Liesfeld, and he passed away earlier this year. Um, and right away, when we were planning the funeral, um, I knew I wanted to talk. I knew I wanted to talk, and it might sound funny at the time. And I said this, I said this to my mom, and my mom and I, and she's got significance too, by the way. And uh, uh, we were planning the entire thing, talking about it, and talking about we weren't we were talking about the the uh, the way we would in, hopefully inspire the people that were there through the service and that was my ultimate opportunity was to speak at at his funeral and there were so many people who say who said to me you know that's going to be really hard do you really want to do that get, can you make it through and and um, I was I was a little bit nervous about that but I got up on that stage. Um, on the day he died, and um, or excuse me, on on the day of his funeral, and got to really have a captive audience. And at that point, and 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 it might sound callous to be talking about it in this way, but it wasn't to me with significance because there were some things that he was about and he stood for that I wanted the people to go away with and be inspired by. And that man, that energized me. It didn't make me sad that day. I've been sad lots of times. I've been crying lots of times. I'm telling you what, I was barely crying that day. I was pumped up. Um, and and people asked me afterwards, and it was hard to explain to people who don't understand significance. They said, how did you not, how did you not lose it? How did you not um, just emotionally break down? And I said, I was excited. Um, and that's not always how it's been, but that's how it was at that moment. That's awesome. How does significance um, play out in your, your partnership? So either at work or maybe at home. I know you've got two awesome kids. Mm -hmm. but what do you feel like your significance gives to others, and how does it work when you're, when you're working with others? Um, I think when you're associated with someone else who has significance, whether it's a family member, whether it's a coworker, whether it's a friend, a significant person, at least for me again, wants the people he's around to also be significant people, right? The, the more significant people that you're with, the more chance, the, the, the chances increase of you being significant and you doing significant things. And because of that, I think the people that you're with, that I'm with, I want to make more significant. Not to overuse the word, but I want to bring their level of recognition up. I want to bring their potential for impact as well, too. And... I want to make them a big deal, right? You want the people around you, the people who have chosen to be in your circle, to be a big deal. You become almost kind of like a promoter for the people who you've chosen to have around you. And I think sometimes people focus on the part of significance um, that is, well, people who are significant are only in it for what they're getting back in these relationships, for the feedback, for, oh, you're a great guy, oh, you did a great job of this. But the truth is people who are, high in significance, I think, have a pretty insatiable desire to bring the people around them up to the to, to a level where their significance as well, because that in turn feeds my significance, because everybody in my circle is also a big deal. Mm. How do you do that? How do you bring other people up to that level? Um, you know, it, dep it, 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 it depends. I mean, I take... It, it really depends on the person. It depends on, on the situation. I don't know if there's a, a way I can really clearly generally say how you do that, but there's, I think you start to get a, a level of pride in your, not, not in necessarily just in the fact that you've made these associations, these friendships, or they're your family, but you're not too bashful about letting other people know that you're proud of these people because that in turn continues to raise their own significance. And that, I don't care if you have significance or not, that can feel good and that can really enable uh, re enable people. Significance people are givers too. That's really cool. Um, Jim, I know we've got a, a couple questions. What's what's burning on your mind? Yeah, John, the, the chat room's cheering you on, by the way. You're doing a great <laughs> job here. Thank uh, you. They're giving you some great feedback. They are telling you... Just tell me the good stuff. I don't they, want to hear anything else. They said. I think they even said the word "brilliant" in there at oh, one point. Woo! So there's your, 
there's your fact that you need. Uh, so Carol Ann had asked this question about what did significance look look like in you as a child? If you were to go back seven, eight, nine, in that in that what is and, and then you what you know about yourself now? What did what do you look like? How did that come out for you as a child? Man, that was a, and Mike and I talked about this um, when we were talking on the phone a couple of days ago. And this is a this is a little bit of a a, a difficult one because. I've got competition, as you mentioned. I can see that in me as a child. I've got positivity. I can absolutely see that in me as a child. I activated the same thing. Significance probably looks a little different in a child than it does as an adult. And again, I think it goes, for me, it went to um, really focusing on what the people around me thought of me. Now that's something as if you've ever been in, in middle school or junior high, that's something that you're usually doing anyway quite a lot. Um, and so uh, it can make for some, I think, um, difficult times to, for kids and it can and it can lead if it's not, if it's in the raw form, I think it can really look like selfishness as well. Um, but that's the biggest thing I can think of. At its infancy, it was wanting people to think well of you and and focusing on that and you you can see how you would do that as a child and and through various times of your life but I would it's a good question I don't know that that's a great answer I'd be curious what other people who have strong significance say they saw the earliest signs of it what that might be Mike I'm gonna throw this question to you and John I want you thinking about it while Mike is talking about it. we talk about uh, basements and balconies and when we think about significance Micah, maybe you could talk a little bit as we see basements and balconies for that. You covered a little bit in the beginning, but review that. And then, John, for you, for where do you see those basements and balconies right now in your life? So, Micah, let me throw that to you first. So, sort of the when we talk about basements and balconies, I like to caveat it as you know everybody's strengths stay with you all the time. They're they they don't go away when you're having a bad day. They don't only show up when you're having a good day. Um, and so it is sort of our uh, our obligation to understand what what our strengths look like at all times. Uh, and growing up in Nebraska, we had basements that got flooded a lot, <laughs> and they were moldy and smelly and kind of dark. And we I didn't have a balcony. It's a ranch style house, but I have a balcony now, uh, and it's where you spend a lot of you know it's it's a bonus if you go on a vacation and you've got a balcony because it's sunny. It's the best part of your hotel room, right? So I would say maybe, maybe the basement side of significance, which might have to do with perhaps a little bit of the infancy of significance, is uh, really only being able to focus on that that impact and that recognition. I would say probably the basement of it is being so drawn and led by, am I going to be recognized, that it's all you can see. Mm -hmm. Almost being blinded by recognition. Um, John, would you agree? Yeah, that's a that's a challenge. That's absolutely a challenge. And I think an offshoot of that is when you don't get that recognition. Sometimes you're with people that uh, just don't do that sort of thing naturally. You then assume the worst about what they think about you, and you begin to treat them that way. And I've that's been a challenge for me. You assume they think poorly about you just because you're not getting that constant feedback, and that can create a barrier right away in any kind of a relationship. Oh, I, I, I like that piece about, you know, it can definitely create some blinders and some barriers. The, the balcony is you can, you can open that up, and if you assume positive intent um, or you assume that you're liked, which can be really difficult for people with significance to do mm -hmm. because they've got that external uh, locus of control almost a, a lot of times. Uh, but if you can start from a place of, okay, they like me, they get me, they're going to recognize me, then I think it can push those relationships a little bit further to where we're both more significant. We're both doing meaningful things. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes back to what I was talking about earlier when you also want that person to be a significant person as well. And when you feel their confidence, it's even easier to do that kind of thing and propel them uh, as I was kind of talking about earlier. John, with your radio show, what, what do you think is the perfect balcony for you? When, it, when is it right when you feel like you've gotten that all right for you and, and the, what kind of feedback are you getting that really fuels that significance for you? Can you give a good example maybe of where you got that feedback and it just it really changed things for you? Yeah, I think you know we're always questioning. Uh, we're always going back and analyzing the things we do on the show. What do people want to hear? Do they want more news? Do they want more light? You know, do you want more politics? you want it local, national? 
Um, and so we're constantly debating that. I'm debating that in my my head constantly. You're trying to you're trying to find that balance. But you know, occasionally you'll you'll have a moment, and and it can just be it can be something simple where you'll have somebody call, and they'll call our lines in between you know seg or something like that, and just say, "Man, that was that was great. That was hilarious. That bit, or that was a great interview." Um, that you just did, and when you're able to get that, you start to feel confidence in what you're doing. Sometimes confidence, I think, is a problem. This is what I was getting back to earlier with with people with significance. Sometimes confidence can be a problem, but you start when you start building that that confidence, the ability to do the big things significance can propel um, really becomes evident. And if I get those little boosts from people confirming what you thought about that was right, this is what we want, then I'm able to do those things a whole lot more confidently. They sound better. Um, and even if they aren't perfect for the audience, when you're doing it confidently and and, and um, ha have a belief that what you're doing is the right thing, it, whatever you're doing, it, it, it comes off and it's more successful. So I think there's something to significance that you mentioned, John, about elevating others that I do hear a lot when I'm coaching people with significance, and they'll say, this is where it's different from competition. You know, competition's about comparison, and I really do want to be first. Mm -hmm. um, significance is about the, the recognition that comes from winning. And so I'll, I'll very often I'll hear people say, you know what, I don't have to be first, but I want my team to get the recognition. Or I don't have to be first, but I want my students to have the best opportunity. It's still that awareness of where we are, but it's mm -hmm. not necessarily about beating others. Yeah, it's not, it, it, it's not an exclusive recognition. I don't think people who have significance want exclusive recognition. Now, I happen to have significance and competition, so there's a little tension there between inclusive and exclusive recognition. I, I, rem I know um, uh, my dad had written about a lot of the strengths pairs, and so I looked up all of mine, and one of, one of mine was, uh, of course, competition and significance, and it didn't sound to me like the most flattering one. It was something to the effect of, I like to win first place, and when I do, I want people to know about it. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I mean, let's be honest, it's true, um, but but I think you made a, I hadn't thought of it that way, Micah. Significance is about, an, it, it, it's an inclusive uh, uh, desire for recognition, whether it's you or people around you. It's not comparing the different types of recognition. It's receiving it and having it somehow be associated with you. With competition, there's a little bit more of a comparison, my recognition versus her recognition or versus his recognition. Oh, very good. We've got time for just one more question, John. Let me ask this of you. It's uh, Dallas asked this question. She says, I've heard that significance can almost seem anti-collaborative in nature due to its desire to make a significant impact. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer working with teams or solo? Why or why not? You, you kind of alluded to this with your partner. Yeah, I, Dave, how does that work? That, that partnership for me it's I mean for me it's definitely solo unless I've got somebody who's really on the same page as me and and in terms of um, significance in terms of the big view that I've got and that usually isn't the case that's just the reality of our our work situations our life situations we're not necessarily paired up with people who are on the exact same page at a page as us and so for me when I'm thinking about the big things I don't want somebody who's going to discourage that a little bit, even when they're unrealistic. I don't want those people around me. Um, I want people who are going to encourage it. And so I think a lot of times when we're talking about the biggest things, I probably do a little bit better working on my own. Yeah, good. Hey, uh, John, do you think Kurt was thinking that you'd be on the show saying that, he, I mean, he wrote that statement about competition and significance. You know, it's, to me, it's it, we think about the impact you make when you do these kinds of things, right? And you've said things on your show and your relationship with people. And as you were saying that, I was just thinking, I think you had any idea that would apply to you on the show that he helped me create. I think that's pretty cool, kind of as we kind of bring this all back around and wrap it. That's kind of the legacy that your dad leaves for us. Uh, I'm going to say before, I'm going to have Micah wrap it here, but John, thanks for taking a few minutes to be on with us and just kind of live in a life, a very candor throwing your life out in front of us here. I think uh, the chat room has told us they've appreciated that, that it's just it was nice and refreshing.
hear kind of just an honest take on it because I think that may be hard sometimes for significance to, to get an honest take on it. We, if we're not getting the right feedback, we may not give that honest take, and so we do those kinds of things. So, John, thanks for doing that. Mike, I'm going to throw it back to you for just a quick wrap. Yeah, thanks. You know, I think uh, whether you're talking about significance or you're talking about any of the other 33 themes that we have here, it's really important to remember that StrengthsFinder is research based on human beings. It's not just, you know, sitting around thinking about how, are, what are all the different behaviors that exist in the world. No, these are based on behaviors that led somebody to do really great things. Um, and it's our job and our obligation to really uh, get to know and be curious and be able to form. Um, Kurt used to say, "Have a poster child, you know, for each of these, uh, each of these themes, and and understand what's great about it." So I, um, John, I just want to thank you so much for for being that great poster child for your candor, but also for you know the your ability to understand yourself and share that with others. I think it, that's really awesome. Significance for me is is one of my favorites because I think it's got a very very attractive um, magnetic pull to it that, that bring elevates us all to a, to a different place. So it's very appropriate, I think, that it was the one that we, we kicked off here. Um, and I just want to thank you and, and thank for everybody for, for tuning in and listening to us later. Uh, that, that Everybody who's thinking about people in a great way is doing something to build this movement around strengths. So it makes a difference. Real quickly, real quickly, Micah, and I know you guys need to finish up, but those of you who are out there who have significance and you've struggled with it like I do and trying to see it as a positive, and sometimes maybe you're even a little, at an extreme case, is crippled by always worrying what other people are thinking and what the world is, is thinking about. You realize that because, um, and significance sometimes has a, a, a negative connotation with it, and it shouldn't, uh, remember that you've got a built-in You've got something built in you that already is worried so much about um, or, or thinking so much about what other people are, are thinking of you um, that sometimes significance itself um, in that connotation, in maybe a negative connotation, is, is feeding that as well. And I, I, hope, I hope people come away with this, whether they've got it, whether they're working with people who have it, uh, as being able to see that, that recognition that sometimes looked as the goal as being the fuel and the goal actually being the impact and the the big thing, whatever that is for people. No, that's a great way to wrap it, John. Thanks for coming on. I'm looking forward to seeing you here in a few minutes as we get to do that. Thanks for coming into Gallup today to get yeah. it done. I'll, I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send us your questions or comments uh, if you'd like to uh, to uh, co you know communicate with us in any way. Best way to do that is our email address, coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program including all the links to our Facebook and YouTube page. If you are if you came out live, I dropped that Facebook link in the chat, a great way to connect with us. There are about 5,000 people in our Facebook group now. And some great conversations going on. Maybe this is your first, uh, first time you've ever thought about this in the strengths community, a great place to connect in. Uh, and head out to the coach's blog, coaching.gallop. Dot com. We want to remind everyone that we have a StrengthsFinder app available for you. If you haven't downloaded that to your phone, Android and iOS as well, just go out to either store and search StrengthsFinder. You can get your top five and remember those. Sometimes it's hard to remember your top five, especially the order sometimes. You can get that right delivered right to your phone and get have it at your fingertips. We, uh, we did produce companion guides for this program, so if you haven't done it yet, go out to the show notes and we'll have a link to that as well. And You can download that and listen to it again and take notes on the companion guide front and back um, a page that's got some helpful hints in that as well. By the way, we're, com we're going to create those for every single theme Thursday. So we're going back. We didn't do it for 30 of, or 22 of these, and so we'll be creating them as well. Just keep following us here on Theme Thursday, and when we have them all ready for you, we'll have new ones for each show going forward. When we have them all ready for you, I will tell you how to do that. If you found this helpful, please share it, and we'd like everyone to, to know thank you for coming out today. It's been a great day to kind of reboot this, and we appreciate you listening to us. And with that, uh, we'll say goodbye, everybody.